What's up guys, welcome to Free Life Passion. Today I'm going to talk to you about some advanced CO2 training. So this type of training follows on from your base CO2 training. I just did a video where I describe how to perform that and I'll link to, to that video in the description. But essentially you, you extend the amount of time that you can hold your breath without experiencing contractions. And um, for me, I did it until three minutes. So then you have this solid block, this solid three minute breath hold, which you can, can perform on command with no contractions and with minimum stress. So if you've already done that and you've already built your base CO2 tolerance and your no contraction breath hold up, then you're ready to move on to more advanced CO2 training. So in advanced CO2 training, you'll be taking your breath holds past your no contraction breath hold and be experiencing contractions during your breath holds. Now, like everything in freediving, if you go too hard too soon, you're just gonna get burnt out, overtrain, and you're not gonna really feel any benefits of your training. So you have to do it gradually and gently. As you're progressing and making your breath holds more and more challenging, you should always pay attention to the stress levels that you're associating with this breath hold. If it's stressing you out, you out or if you're not sure if you'll be able to complete the, the breath hold that you've planned, or if you start to fail the breath holds, then you're pushing yourself too hard. If you've planned a CO2 session and you even start a breath hold, just thinking, oh, I'll just see how I feel on the breath hold. I'll, I'll just see how it goes. I'll cut it short if I feel like I have to then yeah, already you've kind of extended yourself past what you know you're comfortable to do. And that's not really gonna be the most efficient training for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you two examples of some advanced CO2 training that you might want to try after you've built this base. The first one for me makes the most sense and it's the one that I prefer to use because it follows logically on from your base training. If you're gonna do some more challenging holds, it's good to warm up. So what I like to do is whatever I've built up my no contraction hold to, I'll do two breath holds of my no contraction hold. So to describe the progression that you'll use, you will always do your two no warm up breath holds. From there, you will do two of your longer holds. There'll be steady progressions, but with repetitions. So in the beginning, you could try three minutes 20. You'll do that twice in a session and you'll do that for two to three sessions. Then you can add another 10 to 20 seconds. In this example, I added 20 seconds. You will do three minute 40 two times and you'll repeat that for two to three sessions. Then again, you can add 10 to 20 seconds. I added 20, you do four minutes two times and repeat that for two to three sessions. Once something stalls out, then you stop this progression. So once you can't do your, for instance, two four minute breath holds repeatedly, and you fail that twice in two different sessions, then you would stop your progression there. So in total, this exercise will involve four breath holds, two no contraction breath holds, and then two breath holds past your contractions or into contractions. This might not seem a lot, but it'll be enough to start to um, develop your, your CO2 tolerance and to build some understanding of what it's like to go into your contractions. Obviously, it would be better if you could do six to eight um, hard holds. But the thing is, we have to be realistic with our time and with our energy. And most people might manage to do six to eight holds in a session, but what's the chances of them doing that for months and months? You know, we all have to get up early, go to work, blah, blah, blah. So if it's simply four breath holds and we can still get some gains and some benefits from that, then that makes more sense than doing a really long, hard table, which we can't continue over a longer period of time. Now, if you start to fail the breath holds, like let's say you're trying to do a four minutes, but you only get 345, then that would be okay for one session. But then if it happens again for the second session, then you know you've kind of extended yourself too far and you're trying to do a breath hold you're not quite um, capable of at that moment. So once that happens, once you start to fail your breath holds or once your progression kind of stalls, then you have two options. So what you've done is you've built your no contraction breath hold, 
you've built your high CO2 base. Now once you've took this base as far as you can, and once you can't repeat your breath holds anymore, then what you can do is just go back again to your base training, or from this point, you can try to do your maxes, and if you're interested in like seeing what your max static is or increasing your max static, then you could do that from here. Now, this base you've built, that's the breath hold that you can do every time. But if you are particularly motivated and if you adjust your periodization accordingly, then of course you can hold your breath longer. Um, and that would be more like a max style breath hold. So you have the opportunity to do that if you like. Now the thing is about going past this CO2 base and into more max breath holds is it's going to be more stressful. You're going to be able to do less breath holds per session. So training wise it's not so great. And also you'll find that it's not going to be repeatable. Maybe one day you have extra motivation so you'll get yourself to like uh, five minutes. The next day you'll feel like far less motivated so you'll only do 420. So I don't recommend trying too many maxes, maybe like um, two to three maxes, building up your, your time. And then once you've done your, your PB or seen what you can do for your max static, then again, you would go back to your no contraction breath holds and try to extend this no contraction time. So last, my last base training, I built up to three minutes. So my next base training, I'll build up to like 3 minutes 20. I like this type of training because it kind of makes sense. Your breath hold is gradually getting harder. You know how much further past your contractions you can go. You know when you should get your contractions. And it just logically follows on from your base training. The second advanced CO2 training that I'm going to show you guys is not quite like that. It's just hard and it's good if you just want to get used to experiencing high levels of CO2 or if you're a little bit stuck for time, this one's great because in a short amount of time, you can build up a lot of CO2 and do a pretty good training session. For this type of training, you have three variables. One is the total time of the table. The other one is the breath hold time. The third one is how many breaths you take between breath holds. So let's say, for example, you only have 10 minutes to train. Your time would be 10 minutes, your breath hold time, of course, that's going to depend on your level and you'll have to try this table a few times to kind of like fine tune it to yourself. But let's say your breath hold time is one and a half minutes and between each breath hold, you're giving yourself two breaths. So you would start your stopwatch, do a one and a half minute breath hold at one and a half, you take two breaths and then you do another one and a half minute breath hold, then two more breaths, another one and a half minute breath hold two more breaths, another one and a half minute breath hold until your total time reaches 10 minutes. The nice thing about this table is it's very easy to adjust. So if you wanted to make it a little bit more challenging and experience more CO2, you could, instead of doing two breaths between each breath hold, just do one. Or you could keep the two breaths and make each breath hold time a little bit longer. Or you can keep these the same and make the total time a little bit longer. So what's happening in this table is each breath hold rises to CO2, then your one or two breaths in between each breath hold will release some CO2, but not enough to be back to your baseline. So you start each breath hold with a higher level, then you breathe, build it up, breathe, build it up, breathe, build it up. So gradually throughout the CO2 table, your CO2 is building up and up and up. This is why without adjusting how many breaths you have between the breath hold or how long your breath hold is, simply by extending the amount of time you're doing this table, you're making the table harder. Again, for every two or three repetitions of a specific table, I try and make it a little bit harder. Obviously that's only going to last a certain amount of time. When you find that your progression has stalled, then you can go back again to your base training. You can never do this advanced CO2 training for too long because it just becomes too tiring, too taxing. And as you progress sooner or later, you're gonna be totally out of your comfort zone and it's just gonna soak, you're gonna dread it, you're gonna become overtrained. So you've gotta approach your training in waves. You can ramp up, let it get harder and harder and harder, but then you've gotta bring it back again, 
build up your base to something a little bit stronger than what it was on the previous training period. And then the next time you ramp up, you should be able to go a little bit further. So that's it. That's two really good examples of some more advanced CO2 training. Obviously, there's hundreds and hundreds of different tables that you can invent and hundreds of ways that you can train CO2. These are just two very simple ways that you can fit into almost any lifestyle so you can get some training done. Like I always say, something is better than nothing. And if you train hard, you'll dive easy. So give it a go. That's it for now. So until next time, guys, take it easy and dive safe.